Welcome to the What's New in Autodesk Fusion for September video. In this update, we're excited to showcase the latest features and enhancements our team has been working on for the past couple months. Let's dive in and explore what's new. First up, we've personalized the user experience based on your intent of using the product. You can choose from three core personas, design, ECAD, or manufacturing. Each of these provides tailored recommendations for tasks that are related to that specific role. This empowers new users with ways to work smarter and achieve their goals faster. Let your eyeballs rejoice. We've heard your feedback and have made it bearable to launch your favorite design and make tool for those late nights when inspiration suddenly strikes. We'll admit, the previous loading screen was a bit intense, but we see you and your eyes will see better as well with the new launch experience. The active design and hub names are now displayed in the application title bar, which is visible while the application is active, as well as in the task bar preview. This makes it easier to know you're working on the right data for the right teams. For those participating in our Insider program, the application now has a dedicated splash screen, title bar, loading screen, login, and icon. This makes it easier to distinguish between each version and quickly switch between testing and production environments. Next up, data and collaboration. You likely work in teams, so getting everyone on the same page is critical. We've added some great functionality in this area to streamline the product development process and help make better decisions faster. Here are a few of our favorite highlights. In the design and drawing workspaces, Users can now navigate to the project and folder location of the design or drawing in the data panel. When right-clicking on a design or drawing in the design or drawing tree, the Show in Location option has been added and opens the data panel, then navigates the user to the file location within the project of the folder structure. This will greatly save time finding data for projects that have a lot of components and files. In the Fusion Home tab, the user experience for handling file, folder, and project-related actions has been improved, and now takes into account the permissions of the user within a certain project and folder, and then shows the only available commands while keeping the others grayed out. When hovering over an unavailable action, the user is notified about the lack of permissions and to reach out to the administrator to adjust their role. This enhances security and makes collaboration more transparent. Autodesk has been making some changes to the way we manage cloud data so that your projects will support future updates to your Fusion Hub. As a reminder, you can upgrade your Fusion single user storage to take advantage of a fully featured Fusion Hub. You can initiate the upgrade process now by self-selecting the self-start process in Fusion. You'll be guided through a required in-product upgrade at a later date. The Fusion Electronics workspace has introduced a new dimension to defining design constraints by empowering you with a wide range of scope rules. For this work, instead of having a single global design rule preference, we now have divided into two distinct categories, design preference and design rules. If you currently have DRC parameters in your current designs, don't worry, they are fully compatible with our new technique. Design Preference will continue providing you access to global rules such as layer stack up, layer material and dielectric properties, annular ring values, and much more. Design Rules will now offer you scope capabilities. That way, you will be more in control of constraints on your board design. Notice that we have more general rules and custom rules. In Custom Rules, you can now set up copper to copper clearance for a specific layer a specific signal, or even better, both. Yes, you can set up a signal to follow my clearance rules on layer two, which are different from those constraints on layer one due to signal integrity concerns. Try it out and discover that there is a lot more. This is more than just a DRC update. It's a game changer for PCB designers, making your work more precise and in control. We recognize that smooth teamwork is essential for progress and we're thrilled to introduce our latest update with enhanced importing features. You now have the capability to directly import your electronic schematic files, PCB designs, and library files from KiCad into Fusion. This enables you to seamlessly continue your work from where you left off, 
but now with the added advantage of utilizing Fusion's comprehensive electromechanical platform, making your design workflow even easier than before. Starting with this update, you can now import and export user parameters, offering significant benefits to many of our multi-user accounts in particular. This allows you to share valuable parameters between multiple Fusion documents and reduce that non-value-added work of creating the common ones each design iteration. Essentially, parameters are stored in an external table that you can import or export, but these parameters are not associatively linked with any specific design. This means that you can easily bring in a set of pre-populated default parameters for use. When exporting, only user parameters populate this list, and you can edit the exported table using Excel or Notepad if needed. However, it's important to note that any changes to parameter values in the external table will not update existing designs upon re-import. Instead, a new parameter is created with the updated name. Additionally, you have the flexibility to select which parameters from your list you want to import. This release, we wanted to pay a little attention to the form environment in Fusion. Creating T-splines is an incredible superpower of Fusion that not many people are familiar with. You now have enhanced control over the bevel command, allowing you to better define your component's design. One key improvement is the ability to specify an exact offset distance for the bevel, rather than a relative distance. This ensures a consistent bevel dimension along the entire edge, regardless of the size of the connecting faces. Additionally, you can now define the crowning of the bevel with a range from 0 to 2. A value of 0 creates a fully flat chamfer, while increasing the value results in a more convex profile. We clustered a set of improvements to the offset sketching tool together. The Match Topology option helps you decide whether the offset created should be forced to match the topology of the parent curve. You can see how the offset limits itself in certain directions if it's unable to maintain curves and corners as expected. Offset now also retains constraints, so if you delete an element of an offset curve, the offset constraint automatically adjusts to maintain its connection to any remaining curve. The two-sided offset option enables you to apply a two-directional offset from a central line. This makes it easier to create symmetrical designs, but you also have the option to edit those offsets to be asymmetrical later, as each offset behaves as an individual entity, allowing for separate editing or manual linking as needed. The offset of an offset update allows you to create multiple offsets derived from an already offset line, something that previously wasn't possible I'd also like to note that you should almost always use match topology, as it's dependent on each other, as shown here. This is how I created the set of offset wall component thicknesses that essentially build upon each other. Configuring joint snap locations and joint flipping offers you some greater control over the positioning of components in your configured assemblies. Users can now select multiple options for each snap location of a joint and name each option allowing for flexible configurations such as a single location to many locations, many locations to a single location, and if you're feeling extra crazy, you can do many locations to many locations. We've also put a much requested update on the ability to choose whether a joint is flipped or not for each configuration. Configuring thread features automatically change the thread dimensions between configurations. This is the foundation for configuring all threads and holes throughout Fusion. For now, you can configure various thread options, including thread type, such as ISO, metric, ACME, screw, pipe, any of these thread size, whether the thread is modeled, full length, left or right handed, thread pitch designation, or class. This feature is particularly useful for creating components that can adapt to standard parts changing sizes, such as an adapter plate that adjusts to match the size of a motor, or for creating a standard part. We've updated drawing automation once again. This update allows users to set default dimensioning strategies in their drawing templates. When you create or edit a drawing template, you can now choose a default dimensioning strategy for each sheet type in the automation settings. 
And as an added bonus, delimiter support, which allows users to specify whether a comma or full stop is used as the decimal delimiter in numbers. This feature enables users to customize their drawing settings to align with their own regional standards. We're introducing the new copy study feature for configured designs. This enhancement significantly improves configuration support for simulation and generative design, reducing repetitive tasks by allowing users to quickly copy setup information, such as boundary conditions, materials, contacts, and study settings from one configuration to another. If any setup attributes are incompatible with the destination configuration, then they will be flagged for the user to action upon before running the study. Global loads in generative design allow for the support of both angular and linear global loads in your generative design setups. Global load represents forces acting on a mass across the entire study setup. Angular global loads account for forces on a mass undergoing angular acceleration or velocity, while linear global loads are for masses experiencing linear acceleration. Let's start manufacturing with the new Avoid Machine feature, which is my favorite in this release, as it gives more control to how you use surfaces in a toolpath. This replaces the previous Avoid Touch, which only allowed you to touch or avoid, and never at the same time. This new approach allows you to group sets of surfaces together and apply an action of Avoid, Machine, Gouge, or Fixture to each group. Radial and axial clearances can now independently be set for each group as well, giving you even further control. This also aids in the issue of some toolpaths ignoring fixtures defined in the setup. Now, fixtures will be automatically added, marked in yellow, and avoided. Most 3D and multi-axis toolpaths support this new feature, except for rotary pocket, rotary contour, horizontal, and swarf. Changes have been made to the toolpath dialog, making it easier to navigate by re-establishing the left-to-right workflow. This improvement will be especially noticed in multi-axis toolpaths, reducing the need to move back and forth across the tabs. The machining type is now available at the top of the first tab and can be set to 3, 4, or 5 axis, allowing you to set your intent up front about how you want to machine a part. The multi-access tab has been moved to the second tab in the workflow, and additionally, the tool orientation has been moved from the geometry tab into the multi-access tab. These changes will prevent cases where you must go to a later tab, set parameters, and then return to an earlier tab to make further adjustments, allowing for a more streamlined workflow. The 3D Contour Toolpath has been enhanced, giving you the ability to now machine undercut regions. This new functionality is not readily apparent, as it is part of collision avoidance. By checking it on, the tool axis is adjusted to allow spherical tools such as a ball or lollipop end mill to reach into the undercut areas. It's worth mentioning that care should be taken when using this with boundaries, as the boundary defined may not entirely encapsulate the undercut area, resulting in a toolpath that is not complete. Whisper cuts is the term typically used when the tool is cutting little to no material. These cuts not only increase the cycle time, but can also, in certain circumstances, potentially damage the tool. The algorithm for the 3D Adaptive Clearing Toolpath has been enhanced to better identify and reduce these unnecessary cuts, leading to improved rest roughing toolpaths, which not only save you machining time, but are also safer for the tool. CAM data previously was not accessible in a link design that was imported, which meant that it is not possible to create an assembly of CAM programs. For example, to position a part in a vise or to combine pre-programmed parts together on a multi-part fixture. This functionality has been improved, allowing you to now reuse CAM setups and operations from linked designs. The imported CAM data is read-only, but edits can be made to the workpiece coordinate system or tool orientation to refine how the toolpaths are applied to the new assembly. Setups or operations which are not required can be suppressed and you can also break the link on the setups to gain full control of all toolpath modifications. 
Vendor tool libraries are now integrated into the tool library interface. Streamlining from an online repository, this removes the need to download them and puts up-to-date tooling right at your fingertips. Tooling is read-only when viewing them, but you can select drag or copy the tools or holders from the vendor libraries to your own cloud, local, or document library and edit them as needed. The thread tool definition has been enhanced to increase accuracy. With these changes, the inner diameter now automatically calculates based on the thread profile angle, thread pitch, and diameter parameters. The behavior of the thread profile angle parameter has also been changed so that it now describes the thread's inclusive angle more intuitively. We're excited to announce Automated Arrange, which brings significant improvements to the Arrange feature. Part and part arrangements are now available to improve material usage along with the option to create copies or move original components. Arrangement nodes are created in the browser tree, with selections cross-highlighting across objects in the browser, canvas, and timeline, making it easier to see what's being arranged. Multiple manufacturing setups can be created directly from arrangements, enhancing associativity between model, arrangements, setups, and toolpaths. Manufacturing extension users see enhancements as well with a global value of part quality control, multi-edit capability. The ability to apply individual overrides, grain and orientation, as well as multiple envelopes along with filler part settings to maximize material utilization. The Fill Build Volume tool helps you fill the unused space in an additive machine's build volume with multiple copies of a part to maximize production capacity. This now includes a new filling type called 3D True Shape, which will consider the actual true shape of all components instead of their bounding boxes, resulting in more parts being added to the empty volume. This new filling type also allows you to consider different part orientations by rotating the part around its X, Y, or Z axis, arranging parts in various orientations to make better use of the full build volume. Thank you for making it to the end of our What's New for September. I know we had a ton of updates this release and we're really excited to see how you use them. Let us know which feature was your favorite in the comments and stay tuned for more updates in the near future and we'll see you in November.